In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abram, go forth from the land of your kinfolk and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. All the communities of the earth shall find blessing in you. Abram went as the Lord directed him, the word of the Lord. Amen. Tonight's response psalm is, Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his work are trustworthy. He loves justice and right, and the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness to deliver them from death and to preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Our souls wait for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. He saved us and called us to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design and the grace bestowed us in Christ Jesus before time began but now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, you bless the Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you may worthily and fittingly proclaim his holy gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here 
one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them, and then the cloud came, and from the cloud came a loud voice and said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. We've enjoyed another awesome week in our beautiful paradise, and I have to tell you that I think our prayers for rain during the summer months have been answered this week. Rain here, snow in Golden Valley, and Kingman certainly getting a, a long and good answer, a much needed one. And I want to say a huge thank you. Last weekend, we took up a collection. It was a box at the doors of the church, voluntarily to give to Our Lady of Lourdes Parish in East Palestine, Ohio. And so far, we have collected $4,111. People were so unbelievably generous. Thank you very much. I'm going to mail that money out on Monday. So we left the basket on the table tonight. In case there's anybody who wasn't here last week and wanted to put something in, uh, please do so. We're going to write the check on Monday and mail it out uh, to support that parish and the other people in the community in East Palestine. Now during the week, we had Father Michael here for our parish mission. Uh, over a hundred people attended the mission and very successful. And Father Michael always loves coming out here and you're always so very generous with him also. So I wanna thank you. I'm sure he would want me to extend that thank you to you as well. And I want to assure you that I'm no fool. I invited Father Michael back for next year. So <laughs> he will be here as long as he wants to keep coming back uh, because we just don't find someone who has that uh, ability to communicate uh, as in the form of a parish mission anywhere else. So we're very, very grateful. He will be back for 2024 and beyond. And we're doing very, very well in our other Lenten practices. We have more than 60 people coming to our 6 a.m. Tiger Masses on the Fridays of Lent, and about 60 people coming to Stations of the Cross on Friday evening at 6 p.m. So people are taking seriously the idea of doing something. And for people, those things are, are some things that are valuable. If you'd like to join in on either one, please feel free to do so. Now with Father Michael here this week, I was able to get away a little bit, so I went up to Las Vegas. But it wasn't just vacation time. I was actually working. I went to ASD. It used to stand for Associated Surplus Dealers. It's a really large convention in the convention hall at Las Vegas where they sell all sorts of merchandise, all types. You can buy almost anything there uh, at a really, really good price. One of the features this year with the new convention center and all the buildings they've added, <clears throat> they have underground tunnels connecting all of the convention center buildings. And so you go down an escalator and you get into a Tesla. It's sponsored by Tesla and the whole thing is free. It comes with your experience at the convention center and they take you from one building to another through these little underground tunnels. It's really very, very well run. Well, while we were doing the transportation there, getting from place to place, my friend Darren came with me, and I have on my badge, you know, Charlie Ernick, St. John the Baptist Catholic Church Laughlin, and some of the other people who were there, they looked at me and said, what's a church doing at an affair like this? And I said, well, we need to buy things too. I said, Tigers is one of the things. 
And they looked at me, and I told them about our tiger mask. Then I said, we buy supplies for the building, for our kitchen. We buy gifts to give away on Father's Day and Mother's Day. We buy things for our Christmas party. And so they understood, and we had a really, really nice visit. And one of the things I was looking for, I wanted to get about 100 tigers, because at the end of the tiger mass, we give away a tiger at, uh, just before Easter. And so I needed about a hundred of them. I wanted to be sure I was well supplied. And I found a beautiful tiger. It was really great. And the price was really, really good. And they came in boxes of a hundred. And I said, oh, this is great. And I sat down with the lady at the stand and I'm signing the paperwork for it. And I just, the last minute thing I said, you're sure that there are only tigers in these boxes? I said, oh no, it's a mixed set. <laughs> and I said, but I, I need a hundred tigers. Well, you'll have to buy four boxes. <laughs> I said, that would give me 400 animals. I said, what would I get? She said, well, you would get a hundred tigers, a hundred elephants, a hundred leopards, and a hundred monkeys. <laughs> And I said, well, I can't change the name of the mass every year to use up the animals. So we ended up not buying from that person. But we did find some tigers somewhere else, which the people going to the tiger mass will see the end of Lent. I should mention my friend Darren is six foot two, and I'm five foot eight. And I discovered this week that I love escalators. Every time we got to an escalator, if it was going up, I got on first. And if it was going down, I had Darren get on first. And it never got old. It was really nice just being able to stare one another in the face. And today uh, marks the anniversary on this date in 1776. Papa Francisco Garces crossed the Colorado River just above where the Avi is and entered the state of Nevada, what became the state of Nevada. And so he became the first priest and the first European to ever set foot in what is now the state of Nevada. And he did it in what is now Laughlin, Nevada. That happened 247 years ago today. I should mention, looking up all my information about Father Garces, Father Garces was 37 years old when he came. He had left his family and his home in Spain. He was assigned to a mission territory of New Spain, which is now pretty much Mexico. He came up to what the area around Tucson was assigned to a mission parish there. And he walked across the desert from Tucson to see what is now Laughlin, Nevada, and then continued on to California to meet up with Father Yenipero Serra, who was a friend of his. It's amazing the connection, amazing how much was done uh, by those people in our area, both Serra and Garces. And so we honor the day on which he was here. Just want to do some quick reflections on today's readings, because I think they, they cover some important points for us. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 12, and it's about Abraham. And Abraham, it says, went and did what God ordered him to do. He did what God asked him to do. And Abram, we should know, if we read the rest of that story, not just the passage we have for tonight's reading, Abram was asked by God or told by God to leave his homeland, to take all of his family, to take all of his herds and flocks, and to start a new life in a new country, which was more than 500 miles away. That's a sizable thing. It becomes more sizable when we realize that Abraham was 75 years old when he was asked to do this. And he went. He uprooted himself. He believed what God was saying, even though it seemed very unlikely and very difficult to do. But he did it. That's why he's remembered in much of our liturgy as Abraham, our father in faith. He believed and trusted what God would do. Despite his age, it didn't stop him. And in Matthew's Gospel today from chapter 17, we have the wonderful story of the transfiguration. 
It always occurs, it's always in our readings on the second Sunday of Lent. Jesus takes Peter, James, and John, three of his most trusted apostles, and go up on Mount Tabor, which is a beautiful space. I was there in the 1980s. It still is incredibly beautiful, the view from Mount Tabor. And up there, he's transfigured. He takes on the appearance of God. His face is glistening. He's white as snow. His clothing becomes <coughs> radiant. And he's seen talking with Moses and Elijah, two figures from the Old Testament. And he hears the voice. The voice comes down from heaven, the voice of God. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Whatever happened on Mount Tabor, it really changed the lives of those disciples. When I was looking for something worthwhile to try to say to our, to our community tonight, I read one commentator and he said, most people don't realize it, but the transfiguration was one of the hardest miracles of Jesus for people to accept. The fact that this man was God, that this was a glimpse of God that these apostles had. It changed their lives. And hearing the voice of God and seeing central figures from the Old Testament, Moses and Elijah, that's amazing. And it's one of the hardest things, the commentator said, for people to accept. And yet, for those who accepted it, it gave them strength and power and a change in their lives that they could never have imagined. I think from those two readings, particularly from Genesis and from Matthew today, I think we can take a couple of lessons. First one might seem very, very obvious. You're never too old to do what God asks of you. You're never too young to do it either. Age is never an excuse. Abraham believed God and did something amazing, and he was 75. We can do amazing things no matter what age we were. And we shouldn't doubt that even children can do amazing things for God. Age is not a barrier to following what God wants. And the second thing I think comes from the transfiguration. Sometimes God asks us to believe things that are very, very difficult. But if we believe them, it changes things for us because they're true. Abraham had to believe that God knew what he was doing. The apostles had to believe that the transfiguration, they were that close to God. He was with them right on that mountain. They had to believe that and it changed their lives because it was true. It occurs to me that you and I, every time we come to mass, every time we get to visit a Catholic church, we're that close to God because of his presence in the Holy Eucharist. We're that close to the divine power. We're that close to our lives being changed. It's hard to believe, but it's worthwhile believing because it's true. God bless you. We stand together for the words of our profession of faith. I believe in one God. Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With great hope and great trust, we bring our prayers to God our Father. We pray for our church, for all those who teach us God's message of faith and hope and salvation. We pray to the Lord. Lord our for peace in our world, for the protection of the men and women in our military forces, for those Christians anywhere who are persecuted, we pray to the Lord. Lord our for all those who are sick in mind or body, all those who are facing surgery or recovering from it, all those for whom we've promised to pray, all those on our parish prayer list, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people in and around East uh, Palestine, Ohio, suffering the effects, the long-lasting effects of that chemical spill from the train derailment, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions of this Mass, for all of the parishioners of St. John the Baptist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for all the blessings we've already received and for all those we anticipate coming in the future. Keep us faithful to you today and throughout our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed, God, Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. For to the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed Blessed God, Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the grace and glory of his name, for our good and all the church. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son of the Highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her together in the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, George Leo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. John the Baptist, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us now share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room. Those who say word in my soul shall be healed.
We invite those who are viewing the Mass online because they're unable to attend Mass in person to join with Deacon Richard in the prayer for spiritual Holy Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul and body. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, into my soul, and into my body. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. As you leave Mass today out in the lobby, uh, Gabe Nunes, who was our Grand Knight from the Knights of Columbus, has papers there announcing a Knights of Columbus golf outing. And it will be two weeks from today. It'll be on the Saturday, the 18th of March. The details are all on the sheet that he has, so if anybody is interested, joining the Knights on that outing, please, you can see Gabe and some of the other Knights who are back there. And also, if anybody has any additional contributions to East Palestine and uh, uh, Ohio, that basket is to your left on the glass top table. That amount, that check, will be mailed out on Monday uh, to Father David in the parish there, Our Lady of Lords, and I'll certainly report back to you the response we get back from there. Uh, next Sunday, not tomorrow, next Sunday at 2 a.m., uh, daylight savings time begins again. So once again, we will be the same as Arizona. We pray that it will last a long, long time like that. They're still, I think, in discussion about making that a permanent change. Hopefully it will. The Knights of Columbus sponsor a program called the Relics of the Passion. They're items connected with or even actually around the Passion of Christ and they're touring the state of Nevada with them. We were pleased to be able to arrange it for Sunday, March 12th. That's next Sunday at 4 p.m. in the afternoon here in our church. Uh, the doors will open about a half an hour before that. Uh, it lasts, the, the prayer service lasts about an hour, and then there's time for veneration and viewing of all of the relics. There's some information about that in the bulletin. Uh, it's open to everybody. We've sent word to all of the area parishes. Uh, you're certainly welcome to invite friends and family. Uh, people who are not Catholic uh, certainly have a connection with these items since it's a, the passion of Christ is shared across Christianity. And so should anybody be willing, we'd love to have you come and join us for that. Like I said, details are in the bulletin. It's 4 p.m. and that will be standard uh, daylight savings time uh, for both sides of the river next Sunday, the 12th. And that will be here uh, in church. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, uh, Sunday the 5th of March, and Deacon Dan's retirement event is over at the new building, the Garza Center, and that's open to everybody, and it extends between 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. on Sunday afternoon. We invite you to come and wish Deacon Dan the best on his retirement, and also to see and enjoy our beautiful Garza Center. Finally, our Colorado River Food Bank is desperately in need of plastic bags the bags that you get from supermarkets, that you might have a pile of hopefully sitting in your home that you don't know what to do with. They really need them badly. So if you can, you can get them down to the food bank this coming week, or if you drop them here at church this coming week, we will get them down to the food bank. But they really need plastic bags very, very much. Please stand and let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now go in peace to love and to serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God.